Today's Bible verse is New Testament, Gospel of Luke, chapter 20, verse 1 to 19. Luke chapter 20, verse 1 to 19. One day, as Jesus was teaching the people in the temple courts and proclaiming the good news, the chief priests and the teachers of the law, together with the elders, came up to him. Tell us by what authority you are doing these things, they said. Who gave you this authority? He replied, I will also ask you a question. Tell me, John's baptism, was it from heaven or of human origin? They discussed it among themselves and said, If we say, From heaven, he will ask, Why didn't you believe him? But if we say, Of human origin, all the people will stone us because they are persuaded that John was a prophet. So they answered, We don't know where it was from. Jesus said, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. He went on to tell the people this parable. A man planted a vineyard, rented it to some farmers, and went away for a long time. At harvest time, he sent a servant to the tenants so they would give him some of the fruits of the vineyard. But the tenants beat him and sent him away empty-handed. He sent another servant, but the one also they beat and treated shamefully and sent away empty-handed. He sent still a third, and they wounded him and threw him away. Then the owner of the vineyard said, What shall I do? I will send my son whom I love. Perhaps they will respect him. But when the tenants saw him, they talked the matter over. This is the heir, they said. Let's kill him and the inheritance will be ours. So they threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. What then will the owner of the vineyard do to them? He will come and kill those tenants and give the vineyard to others. When the people heard this, they said, God forbid! Jesus looked directly at them and asked, Then what is the meaning of that which is written? The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Everyone who falls on that stone will be broken to pieces. Anyone on whom it falls will be crushed. The teacher of the law and the chief priests looked for a way to arrest him immediately because they knew he had spoken this parable against them. But they were afraid of the people. I'll pray. Dear our Father in heaven, I praise your name. Thank you that we can come before you together this week and hear your word. Yesterday, we had um, the celebration of your birth in Kanema. Many people came and we celebrated you. I pray that those people who came to the concert would welcome you in their hearts as the Savior and come to know you more and at this Christmas time 
Many people are celebrating your birth in different places. I pray that they would know the real meaning of the Christmas. And the church can、um, proclaim your good news. We are going to hear your message through Pastor Anjuki now. Please deepen our faith. Thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Merry Christmas. I'm thankful that we can have the Christmas. Together.、Uh, this is a conversation between a father and his daughter. Father said to the daughter, There has been some incidents of a molester appearing in the night. Please be careful. But the daughter said, Father, I'll be okay. I know I'm unattractive. No one's gonna get, him, get me. No, that's not right. The father denied her. The daughter felt happy at this, thinking no matter what others think about her, she is a beautiful, dear daughter to her father. But then the father said, That ain't right. In the dark, the molester won't have a clue how unattractive you are. I'm worried about that. <laughs> so that was the point. <laughs> so darkness can cover up many truths. This is not just about the physical world, but also about the spiritual world. If you are spiritually blind, you cannot see the truth that is there in front of you. Today's passage reveals the spiritual blindness of the religious leaders at the time. They were living in a total spiritual darkness, so they didn't realize when Jesus, the true Savior, was in front of them. And it brought trage tragedy upon them. Let's look at verse 1. One day, Jesus was teaching people in the temple. Then the religious leaders came and questioned him. It says, The priests and the teachers of the law, together with the elders, these are the members composing the Sanhedrin. The Supreme Council of Jewish Community, just like the national government. They were the elite people of Israel. Another Bible translation says they confronted Jesus together. Confronting shows their challenging attitude towards him. They were almost grabbing onto Jesus. And what they said is in verse 2 Tell us by what authority you are doing these things. Who gave you this authority? What authority are you doing these things? These things, meaning things such as teaching people in the temple and also driving out the merchants from the, table,、uh, from the temple in chapter 19. Whose authority, whose permission are you having? They asked. This leader of the Jewish community had all the things going on in the temple. So they supposed without their permission they could do nothing in the temple. But Jesus was doing his own thing. So they asked, What authority or what kind of authority are you having that you do such things? So, depending on Jesus' answer, they might have execu executed him straight away by stoning him. So, if Jesus answered, This authority is from heaven or God, they would accuse him as being a blasphemer. But on the other hand, if Jesus said, It is an authority from heaven, Human, from myself or from the crowd, 
they would accuse him as saying, you're doing this on your own and you have no qualification. So either way, they could stone Jesus as a dangerous man against the law of Moses. So Jesus, of course, he knew their motive. So he didn't answer their question, but instead, he questioned them back. Verse 4, Tell me, John's baptism, was it from heaven or of human origin? The John the Baptist, do you believe he was from God, or do you believe he just did his things on his own? So if the leaders answered, it was from heaven, Jesus could tell them, then why don't you believe him? Because John the Baptist testified against Jesus again and again, saying, this man is a lamb of God, the savior of the world. Why don't you believe his voice? Jesus could say that against them. Or, on the other hand, if they said it's of human origin, he just did things on his own. Because all the people believed he was the prophet from God, it was very dangerous. So the religious leaders couldn't answer if it was from human or God. And Jesus said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. Looking at these questions and answers, we could see how spiritually blind these religious leaders were. There has been a horrible incident in Japan. A junior high school boy stabbed his parents and a grandmother to death with a knife. He stabbed the mother 72 times, the father 37 times, and the grandmother 56 times, 160 times altogether. These are the people who loved and raised him since his birth for 14 years, the parents and the grandmother. He received all these love and still stabbed them 150, 165 times. The police thought there must be a really strong motive behind this incident, and they investigated really hard. They thought maybe it was the over-educational mother or a grudge against a strict father. But the boy only said, I don't know why, I just felt annoyed, I just felt angry. That's the reason he stabbed his family for 165 times. And after he killed them, he took a shower he went back to his room and watched the movie of his favorite celebrity, then called his friend saying, I've got some money, let's go out together. It's a horrifying incident. In his heart, God's voice or the voice of conscience didn't resound in his heart. Do not murder, do not harm people, especially the people who loved you so much. That voice of God, voice of conscience, didn't resound in his heart. That might have been the problem of the family he grew up in, not believing in the invisible and supreme being greater than human. He didn't have that awe towards this supreme being. He didn't have the God's voice of authority in his heart, so he could do these things without hesitation. Nothing is more tragic than not having God's voice of authority resounding in one's heart. Is God's authoritative voice resounding in your son and your grandchild? The rulers, uh, religious leaders of the time 
didn't have the God's voice resounding in their hearts. So Jesus told them another parable, the parable of the bad farmers. This parable is an allegory, each word having a me meaning behind them. So the chief priests, teachers of the law, and the elders understood what Jesus meant straight away. They knew he was talking about them. That's why it is said, the teachers of the law and the chief priests knew he had spoken this parable against them. The vineyard owner shows the Father God. The vineyard is the people of Israel, and the farmers who take care of this vineyard is the leaders of the Israel. The servants are the prophets sent from God, and the beloved son is, of course, Jesus Christ himself. So, this parable meant God chose Israel and planted them in the land of Canaan. He blessed them so that they would be the source of blessing for all the people of the nation. But the Israelites' leaders led the Israel astray. They led him to uh, idol worship. So God sent prophets to call them to repent. But the Israel, Israelites' leaders persecuted and killed the prophets instead of repenting. So God finally decided to send His own only beloved Son, Jesus. But they killed Jesus Christ on the cross. So this was a prophecy that Jesus would be killed on the cross by the people. And as a result, the angry, ten, angry uh, vineyard owner gave a judgment towards the leaders, uh, towards the bad farmers. This is prophesying the destruction of the city of Jerusalem in the year 70 AD. So when they knew the meaning of this parable, Israelite leaders looked for a way to arrest him immediately. They were angry and they tried to arrest him, but they couldn't because they were afraid of the people. The people were leaning towards Jesus. So if they arrest Jesus, the people would have done a riot against him. But Israelite leaders were that angry at Jesus. Only if their spiritual eyes were opened, they would have realized their sins and faults and repented immediately. But unfortunately, they feared man, not God. They were spiritually blind. Man is hopeless if the voice of God no longer reserves in him. He is moving straight on to destruction. At the end of this parable, Jesus quotes the word from Psalm 118. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. What this means is the people at that time built the house using the stones and these builders threw away a stone saying this stone is no good and that stone was actually the most important and that stone is showing Jesus Christ being thrown away by the religious leaders, saying he is no good. That stone was the most important of all. The Psalm 118 prophesies this. So after they have thrown away the stone, there was a great reversal. This was shown through the resurrection and the second coming of Jesus. The cornerstone or the keystone 
is the central stone of the arch-shaped construction. So this arch-shaped construction had the foundations at both sides. And the most important stone of this arch-shaped construction was the la last one that comes at the middle. So in order to break down this construction, you only had to take the middle stone out. That was the key or the cons uh, cornerstone. Jesus was that kind of stone. He's meant to be the central stone of our lives. And if we lose this stone, we can uh, no longer maintain ourselves. We'll fall to the pieces. So this was the answer to the very first question by the teachers of the law and chief priests. Tell us by what authority you are doing these things. Jesus is boldly proclaiming here, I am the authority itself. One's attitude towards me decides his life. Those who go against me will be crushed to pieces. And when I come to ju for judgment, all things will vanish. I am the ultimate authority, he said. So it is very important what we place as the foundation of our lives. If you place anything other than Jesus Christ and try to pile up all these things, that is meaningless. It will, no, no, it will not last the eternity. There is a person called Hideyoshi, a famous shogun. He started from ver being a very low, po um, poor person to becoming the top of the country. Everyone is very impressed by his life. He was really a great person, but Hideyoshi said right before his death, dew falls and dew disappears. Even my difficulties are just dreams of dreams. There's a morning dew on the leaves in the morning, but that dew only lasts until the sun rises then it evaporates and goes away. And Hideyoshi thought his life was like that. It was just momentary. And he said his life was like looking at dream, watching a dream in a dream. And his last breath, he said, I feel so empty, so meaningless. Everyone might have thought it's a great life, he himself thought, it's so empty. Hideyoshi heard about Jesus Christ many times through the missionaries, but God's voice didn't reach Hideyoshi's heart. That's why he had to close his life, saying, it's so empty. Building your life on anything other than Jesus will only leave you empty. It is very tragic not having God's authoritative voice re not resounding in our hearts. I would like to tell you a story of a miracle that took place on the Christmas Eve. In Montana State in America, there was a young couple named Steve and Katie. At the end of November, Katie's mother was diagnosed with terminal cancer, only having a few more months to live. So hearing that news, they used their savings and Katie flew to her mother. They collected all their savings and finally they could send one person by a plane. They are very poor. Steve, the husband, he wanted to join her before Christmas. So he was collecting the money. But as the Christmas approaches, he was having trouble affording the flight. When Steve told that in the church, a businessman called Joe, who attends the same church, told him, 
I'm also flying in the same dis- direction on the Christmas Eve. Would you like a ride with me? And Steve gladly agreed and they took off together. In the afternoon of December 24th, Steve and Joe went to the airport and Steve felt anxious when he saw Joe's Cessna plane. The Cessna plane was very small. He was anxious if this was going to take off safely. But because it was the Christmas Eve, the, the, he heard the song Silent Night from the airport speaker. And his anxiety subsided. He thought, It's okay, God will help me. And they got on a plane and took off. The weather was fine in the beginning, but an hour later, heavy fog came. And blocked their sight. Joe said, It's going to be okay. This computer can go on autopilot mode so it would fly through the fog safely. But only when at the arrival we have to drive the plane. But it will probably, the fog will probably go away by the time of arrival, he said. However, the worst, worst situation had happened. The Iowa State Airport that they were going to arrive at, as they approached that place, it was covered with heavy fog and they, could, they couldn't see forward. So Joe called to the control tower for help. We cannot see, so please um, navigate us. But the control tower replied, the airport is closed. Due to the heavy fog, we cannot give you permission to land. Please fly back to the nearest airport, South Dakota, and land there. But they were running out of the fuel. They had to land there. Otherwise, they would fall. So they pleaded them. But the control tower only replied, We are, blo- we are closed. You cannot come. And when they were disappointed, there was another voice coming. I will navigate you. I will give you permission for arrival. Please lower the altitude, he said. So as they lowered the altitude, um, they got under the heavy fog and they realized that they were flying over a highway. And they almost hit the highway sign. Suddenly that voice came. Raised the altitude, and they quickly raised the altitude. And there came the specific instructions like lower the body a little more. No, that's too low.、Um, lean the body to the right, straight forward. And after、um, about 30 minutes, there came the voice lower the altitude. Now you should be able to see the runway. And just as the man said, they could see the runway ahead of them, and they made a safe landing. And after the landing, they contacted the control tower to show their gratitude to that man. Thank you so much for giving us such accurate instructions. We owe you our lives, they said. But the control tower replied to them, perplexed, What are you talking about? We never gave instructions. We have previously said the airport is closed. No aircraft has landed here, they said. We didn't give the instructions. And these two men had goosebumps on them, saying, It was God, the voice of God. God has navigated us. And Steve remembered hearing the song Silent Night at the Montana State Airport. So God's voice, God's authoritative voice, had guided them. Two thousand years ago, at the original Christmas, the shepherds silently guarded the sheep in the night. Then the angels broke that silence and said, Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. And the shepherds flew to that place because that authoritative voice had captured their heart and they looked. 
at that baby Jesus, and they were the first worshippers of the Christmas. So this Christmas, please listen to this authoritative go- voice of God. Let's listen to God and live this life. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for sending your only begotten Son, Jesus, and thank you for this season that we remember that. Mm-hmm. Today, we heard this message and we know how tragic it is not having your authoritative God in our hearts. We came to know you and believe you through your authoritative vo- voice. Your voice is guiding us every and each one of each day. So let us live this life resounding your voice in our hearts. This coming year, let us live um, by your words. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen.